ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umur muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things when you invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything when you invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kullu bid'atin dalala and every innovation is misguidance and leads astray وكل ضلالة في النار every going astray every misguidance is in the hell fire ثم أما بعد قال الإمام ابن القيم رحمه الله ما مضى لا يدفع بالحزن بل بالرضا والحمد والصبر والإيمان بالقدر وقول العبد قدر الله وما شاء فعل ابن القيم الجوزية رحمه الله may Allah have mercy on him he said the pain of what has passed cannot be removed by grieving. We can lament and anguish and cry and sob and grieve as much as we want, but that's not going to remove the pain. The pain of what has passed can only be removed through five things. Acceptance of Allah's decree, being pleased with the decree of Allah. Gratitude and thankfulness and praise of Allah. Alhamd. Patience, as sabr having patience with what Allah decreed. Al-Iman al-Qadr, Al-Iman al-Qadr, having firm faith and belief in Allah's decree and destiny. And saying, Qadr Allah ma sha'a fa'amda, Allah has decreed this, and He willed this, and He does as He pleases. So if we take this beautiful statement, and we look at it, you will find that it is of course based upon the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And these are reminders we need to get to ourselves, especially in this dunya where we seem to be in grief over everything, in depression over everything, in sadness over everything. And by this we find ourselves continuously in that state. Ibn al-Qayyim, he said, Rahimahullah, the pain of what is past cannot be removed by grieving over it, but through the acceptance of the degree of Allah, being pleased with it. Allah says, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Allah says what means, so do not become weak. Don't be sad. Allah is telling us, do not be weak. Do not be sad, and you will be superior in victory if indeed truly you are the believers. It's a promise from Allah. Victory will come if you're upon tawheed, if you're upon the correct belief, the correct aqidah. Do not be sad and do not despair. This wahan in Arabic is that feeling of not being able to change something. That feeling that you've tried so hard to change something and still you're still persistent in the same situation. And you just see things getting worse. You feel like a failure. You have no hope. Then that feeling overpowers you. Now you're in deep grief. You're in depression. You're in anxiety. You're in sadness. You're in sorrow. But Allah is telling you, وَلَا تَهْنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Do not become weak. Do not be sad. Do not give up, do not despair, do not feel hopeless. Allah tells you not to overwhelm yourself and to not overburden yourself. Prophet Muhammad he was ordered to tell the captives in his hands, 
إن يعلم الله في قلوبكم خيرا يؤتكم خيرا مما أخذ منكم ويغفر لكم الله غفور رحيم the Prophet ﷺ, he was commanded to tell the, captive, to tell the captives that his hands, if Allah knows that there's any good in your hearts, he will give you something better than what he has taken from you. So whatever Allah decrees in this life for, uh, for to, to happen to us, whether it be taking away goods or lives or wealth or whatever it may be, this came from the one who created you, don't you think he knows what's best for you? If Allah takes away something and you're patient, He'll give you better than what He took away and He will forgive you and Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. عن عبادة بن الصامت قال لابنه يا بني إنك لن تجد طعم حقيقة الإيمان حتى تعلم أن ما أصابك لم يكن ليخطئك وما أخطأك لم يكن ليصيبك سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن أول ما خلق الله القلم فقال له أكتب فقال القلم ربي وماذا أكتب قال أكتب 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 مقادير كل شيء حتى تقوم الساعة يا قال يا بني إني سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من مات على غير هذا فليس مني Although we've repeated this hadith, this is one of those ones that every day we need to remind ourselves of. Why? Because in the end, you won't be from this ummah if you're not upon this. The Prophet Ubad ibn al-Samad, he told his son, you will not taste the reality of faith. You won't taste true faith, haqiqat al-iman, until you realize that what has come to you could not miss you. If something was intended for you, it's coming to you. Whether you like it or not, nobody can stop it. And what has missed you, it ain't gonna come to you. If you didn't get that job, if you didn't get that dollar, if you didn't get anything you were looking for, it was not meant for you. From Rabbil Alameen, from the Lord of the world, He did not decree it for you. It ain't coming to you no matter how hard you try, or your friends try, or your brothers try, or your family tries. If it was missed, if it was not intended for you, it ain't gonna come to you. He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, say that the first thing that Allah created was the pen, and he told the pen to write. And the pen said, My Lord, what shall I write? And Allah said, Write down everything that's gonna happen to the end of time. This happened 50,000 years before Allah created the heavens and the earth. 50,000 years before any of what we see and what we don't see was created. And he's saying, write down everything that's going to happen to the end of time. It was all written and prescribed how to Nuh and Mahfud before we were even brought into existence. And we think we can change it. We think we have that power. So he told his son, this hadith of the Prophet Allah told the pen, write down everything that's going to happen to the end of time. He said, oh my son, know that whoever dies upon something other than this, man mata ala ghayri hadha, Whoever dies believing other than this, then they're not from me. Then they are not from me. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Al-Qurtabi, he related that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, do not be an enemy to the blessings of Allah. They asked Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, how can you be an enemy to the blessings of Allah? Ibn Mas'ud, he said, those who envy people for what Allah has given them of His favor. When you envy what others have, you're an enemy to the blessings Allah has given you. He went on to say, Al-Qurtubi went on to say, Allah the Almighty in some of His scriptures, He said, the envier is an enemy of my blessings. Because He's really, if you're envying what others have, you're displeased with what Allah has given you. And you're not satisfied with what Allah has distributed to you. And this was words from the previous scriptures according to Al-Qurtubi in his tafsir of one of the ayat in the Qur'an. The ayah, أَمْ يَحْسُدُونَ النَّاسَ عَلَى مَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ قَدْ آتَيْنَا آلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَآتَيْنَاهُمْ مُلْكًا عَظِيمًا The ayah in Surah Al-Nisa, where Allah says, or do they envy men? For what Allah has given them of His bounty, then we had given, already given the family of Ibrahim السلام, the book, and the hikmah, the hikmah was the sunnah. The hikmah given to all of the anbiya is wahi. 
It wasn't given in the form of a book, but it was deemed sharia, given in the form of a book. Like was given to our Prophet Sallallahu The Messenger of Allah وسلم, was not talking out of his own desire or out of his own whims. He wasn't doing things the way he wanted to. It was all wahi, it was all revelation from Allah. So you cannot separate the Qur'an and the Sunnah. But this is what it is. Do not be an enemy to the blessings of Allah by envying what people have that you may not have been given. Ibn Muflih, rahimahullah, he said, if it was not for calamities, if you didn't have hardship, tests, and trials, the servant would become arrogant, he would become mustakbir, he would become proud, he would think of himself high and mighty, he would become greedy and ungrateful, and he would have transgressed Allah's limits, and he would have oppressed people. But Allah, He gave us trials, difficulties, challenges. Why? He gave it to us to humble us, to keep us grounded, to not become arrogant and proud. He said, but through the calamities of Allah, Allah protects him from that and purifies him from his inner impurities. So subhanAllah is he, glorified and exalted is he who gives mercy through his trials and tests his servants with his bounties. This is rahmah when we go through difficulty. This is a test when we are given from Allah bounties and provisions easily. So be mindful of this. The pain that has passed is not going to get, you're not, you're not going to pass it by grieving. You need to accept Allah's decree. The second point he mentioned, for you to pass the pain that you may have had, it's not going to come from grieving again. He mentioned, alhamd, gratitude to Allah Azza wa وقال ابن القيم فإن الشكر يقع بالجوارح وإن الحمد يقع بالقلب واللسان. He said, رحمه الله, gratitude occurs with the limbs. You're grateful to Allah, you show it by your actions. And praise, الحمد, comes from the tongue and the heart. By you praising Allah with alhamdulillah. قول تملأ الميزان. This is a phrase that fills the scales, your scales. Can fill, make them heavy, the good skills by you saying Alhamdulillah. And the heart, it must be firm in the heart that you praise Allah and you thank Allah. Allah says Alhamdulillah, Allah lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard, wa lahu alhamdu fi al-akhira, wa hu al-hakim al-khabir. Allah says, what means all praise and thanks be to Allah. To Him belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth. His is all the praises and all the thanks in the hereafter, and He is the all-wise, the all-aware. Allah said, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرُكُمْ وَشْكُرُولِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Allah says what means, therefore remember me, by praising me, by glorifying me, by worshipping me, by being obedient to me, and I will remember you, and be grateful to me. وَشْكُرُولِي Be grateful to me. Thank me and praise me for what I've given to you, for the countless favors I've given to you. And never be ungrateful to me. Never be ungrateful to me. An Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu qaf. Qal. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Unduru ila huwa asfala minkum. Wala tamduru ala man huwa fawqakum. Fa inna huwa ajdaru an la tazdaru ni'matullahi alaykum. This hadith which is in the sunan of Ibn Majah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in the sahih. It is authentic. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, look at those below you. Compare yourself to those below you. And Allah has given us billions of people below us. The poorest one up in here is probably rich compared to 95% of the ummah. And this is a, this is a reality. Allah said, Allah's Messenger ﷺ, look at those below you. Compare yourself to those below you. Look at those who don't have good health. Look at those who don't have wealth. Look at those who don't have the clothing you have, the food you have, the family you have, the loved ones you have, the support you have. Look at those below you. Do not look at those above you. Don't look at those who in your eyes have more. More loved ones, more money, more property, more, more degrees, more honor, more status, more popularity. Do not look at them. Do not pray for what they have. Because the hadith continues, because the one who does this, he is belittling the favors of Allah to you. He is belittling the favors of Allah. When you're doing this, you're being ungrateful, greedy. Why? 
Because you're saying, what I have, all this good that I have, it ain't enough if this one has more than me. That type of envy will destroy you. It's the biggest form of ingratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the Prophet Sallallahu when he was afflicted, when he was given good, he would say Alhamdulillah and praise Allah. Make a sajda if he heard great news. And if he was given something of hardship, did he complain? No. He still said Alhamdulillah and he added ala kulli hal. Alhamdulillah for every situation. Praise and thanks be to Allah for every situation because Allah knows best what is best for you. Musa alayhi salam, Allah would respect him and say, Qala ya Musa, inni istafaytuka ala al-nasi bi risalati wa kalami fa khud ma ataytuka wa kun min al-shakirin. Allah says in the Quran, what means Allah said to Musa alayhi salam, O oh Musa, O oh Moses, I have chosen you over the people with my message and with my words by speaking to you. Because Allah, He spoke to Musa alayhi salam directly. Musa alayhi salam could hear Allah. And this is in the Quran, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا And Allah spoke to Musa alayhi salam directly. So this is from our aqeedah that Allah speaks. And this does not liken him to his creation. In any way. Just because you can't comprehend anything past understanding, speaking as some two people being in front of each other, seeing each other, hearing each other, it doesn't mean that it wasn't done. So he said, I've chosen you over the people with my messages and with my words and speaking to you. So take what I've given you and be amongst the grateful. Whatever Allah has given you, be grateful for it. Be thankful for it. A command from Allah upon blessings, upon hardships, that you always be grateful to Him. And if you were to count the favors of Allah, the blessings of Allah, you'll never be able to count them all. You're going to miss a ton of them. You're going to miss them over and over again. Because mankind, we're in grace. We're always ungrateful. We're never satisfied. We're always looking for more. Ibn al-Qayyim, he said, the pain of what has passed cannot be removed by grieving. You cannot get rid of pain that has passed just by always grieving and being down and sad and depressed and this and that. He said, but it can come with sabr, with patience. وَقَمَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَصَّبْرَ عِنْدَ الصَّرْمَةَ الْأُولَى and sabr, patience, is at the first stroke of calamity. When we're talking about those who have sabr, those who have patience, we're talking about the one who when it happens to them, they're patient. Not the one who's patient a week later, or a day later, or weeks later, or months later. No, right when the calamity strikes, they remember Allah. They praise Allah, alhamdulillah, qadr Allah, masha'a fa'al, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajim. They're reminding themselves of Allah. The sabr is how you let past pain go by and put it to rest. Or at least quiet it so it doesn't control you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, and these are ayat we always hear, but we fail to always remember in our daily struggles and trials and tests and calamities. Allah, He said, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا السَّعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah says, oh you will believe, seek patience, seek help, afwan, with patience and prayer. You want to help yourself? Allah gave you two gifts. Sabr and prayer and the salah. Indeed, Allah is with the one who's patient. You want Allah to help you in your times of sadness and stress and trial? You got to be patient. And you have the best person by you, to, the best one by you to comfort you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَقُولُ لِمَنْ يُقْتَلُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتِ بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ and do not say about those who were killed in the way of Allah, of Allah that they are dead. No, rather they are alive, but you just don't perceive it. Again, one of those things that just because our minds, our intellect can't perceive something, doesn't mean that it can't happen a different way. Allah then says, and we shall try you and test you with something of fear. You're going to have fear. Fear of being able to put food on the table for your family, pay your rent. Fear of what may happen in the upcoming years when you see all these wars and blood spilling across the earth. You'll be tested with hunger during times of ibadah, like Ramadan, when you're tested and you're fasting out of your own will for the sake of Allah. And when you forgot your meal, you don't have a dollar, you don't have the money, 
And so you're, you're starving and you're hungry. You'll be tested with loss of wealth and lives and fruits. Loved ones will go away. Money you thought would be coming your way to ease your situation in your, in your mind. And you don't get it. And fruits, but give glad tidings to the patients. To the patient ones. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّ لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Who when disaster strikes them, they say, إِنَّ لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ To Allah we belong and to Him we return. This phrase is not just meant when somebody dies, it's to be said in all situations. إِنَّ لِلَّهِ To Allah we belong. Everything belongs to Allah. You, your soul, your heart, your kidney, your liver, every part of your body. Your home, your clothing, your wealth, your loved ones, they all belong to Allah. Inna lillahi, everything belongs to Allah. Wa inna ilayhi rajiun. And it's all going to go back to Allah. Ulaika alayhim salawatun min rabbihim wa rahmah. Upon them is the salawat, is blessings from their Lord and rahmah, mercy. And it is those who are the rightly guided ones. Allah. Now imagine in these ayat what you get for being from the patient ones. You get Allah aiding you and supporting you, comforting you, comforting you and consoling you. You get Allah loving you, and Allah you, and Allah you have and Allah you have sabrin. Allah loves those who are patient. Allah sends blessings upon you and mercy upon you, and this is the reward for patience. This is why patience is needed to get you past the pain and the sorrow you might have in this life, because you'll have Allah with you, so you're capable of it. But we're choosing to put Allah to the side and just grieve sometimes. When if you have Allah, you'll be blessed with all of these things. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Ibn Al-Qayyim Al-Dawziyah, he said, the pain of what has passed cannot be removed by grieving. Grieving, it may make you feel a little better with time, but if you don't address it with what he mentioned, which is all found in the Quran and the Sunnah, then you're not going to pass that pain in the way that will let you live a life that is most pleasing to Allah. It can only be through acceptance being pleased with Allah's qadr, al-rida, al-rida. <coughs> Gratitude, alhamd, patience, al-sabr, al-iman bil-qadr, having faith and belief in Allah's decree and destiny, and the statement, qadr Allah ma sha'a and saying, Allah has decreed this, and He does as He wills. Covering those last two points, that faith and belief in Allah's decree and destiny, Umar radiallahu anhu, he narrated in the hadith of Jibreel, the one where we know Jibreel came in the form of a man, to teach us our religion, as the Prophet ﷺ said at the end of that hadith. When the Prophet ﷺ, he was asked, فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ الْإِيمَانِ What is Iman? فَقَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَنْ إِيمَانِ أَنْ تُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَتُؤْمِنْ بِالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ He told him, the Prophet ﷺ told him, Iman is that you believe in Allah and his angels, and his books, and his prophets, and the last day, and you believe in the qadr. You believe in Allah's decree, pre-decree, and his divine decree. The preordainment, and Allah knowing everything that's going to happen till the end of time. The good of it and the bad of it, whatever Allah gives you, you accept it. When he said this, Jibreel, he replied with sadaqt. He said, you have spoken the truth. This qadr is part of our belief system, part of our aqidah. Ibn Umar anhuma, when he was told by a, a group of people who came to him saying, there are these Muslims that have, they pray with us, they read the Qur'an, they stand by us, but they deny that Allah knows what's going to happen before it happens. Or they deny that Allah decrees something until that actual time. Yani disbelieving in the qadr and the qada coming way before, as we mentioned in the previous hadith, way before any of the creation was created. And he said, I have nothing to do with them and they have nothing to do with me. If they were to give a mountain the size of Uhud in gold, in charity, Allah would not accept it from them. You have to believe in this qadr. That Allah wrote down everything that was going to happen till the end of time, before creating the heavens and the earth. And whatever Allah decrees for you, good or bad, you accept it. And you be as patient as you can be with it. Allah says, قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبُنَا 
قل لن يصيبنا إلا ما كتب الله لنا هو مولانا وعلى الله فليتوكل المؤمنون Allah says what means say nothing will ever happen to us except what Allah has written for us nothing will ever happen to you unless Allah wants it to happen to you he is our mawla Allah he is our Lord he is our helper he is our supporter he is our protector and in Allah let the believers put their trust. The last one in the Qayyim, he mentioned in saying that the pain of what is past cannot be removed by grieving, it can only be removed by the four previous and this last one. This last one is the statement, Qaddar Allah wa ma It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, Al Mu'min al Qawi khayrun wa ahabu ila Allah min al Mu'min al Ba'if. The Prophet he said, the strong believer is better and more beloved than the weak believer. But both of them are good. So even in times of being weak in your belief, in terms of obeying Allah, obedience to Allah and His Messenger, you still like to Allah, love to Allah. But the strong believer is more beloved and better than the weak believer, although both are good. Ahris. عَلَى مَا يَنْفَعُكَ وَلَا تَعْجِزِ So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, strive to seek what will benefit you. Work hard, look, struggle to see, to seek, to look out for what will benefit you and your family, your deen, your iman. And do not feel helpless. Never give up. وَلَا تَهْنُ وَلَا تَحْزَنُ As we began in the beginning of the, the, the khutbah, do not be sad. Do not be sad. Do not be weakened. He said, <coughs> Strive and seek what will benefit you and do not feel helpless. فَإِنْ غَلَبَكَ أَمْرٌ فَقُلْ قَدَّرَ اللَّهُ مَا شَاءَ فَعَلْ وَإِيَّاكَ وَاللَّوْ فَإِنَّ اللَّوْ تَفْتَحُ عَمَلَ الشَّيْطَانِ This hadith in the sunnah of Ibn Majah, it is sahih, it's authentic. Then the Prophet وسلم, he said, if something overwhelms you, if something happens to you and it overwhelms your mind and your thinking, this, say, قَدَّرَ اللَّهُ وَمَا شَاءَ فَعَلْ Say, Allah has decreed this and destined this and willed this. This is Allah's choice and He does as He wishes. Do not say law. Do not say anything like if or if only or should have or could have or I knew I should have done that. You didn't know nothing. You don't know nothing. When we all say these, and I advise myself first, when we all say these phrases, could have, should have, would have, knew, I knew, man, if only, all of these things, they all fall in the same category. Do not say any of these. Beware of them. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, because when you say those phrases, they open the door to shaitan. When you say those phrases, they open the doors to shaitan. And then he starts thinking, when you think that you actually have control of these things in, in, when all is said and done. Ain't nothing going to happen to you unless Allah wants it to. Ain't nothing coming for you unless Allah wants it to come for you. And when you understand this, then you've understood a great deal of your deen. And then you won't let this life and its trials and its calamities overwhelm you. Briefly, before we begin the salah, inshallah, we're starting to implement like a food pantry for the Muslim community and the non-Muslim community. I sent out a message before Jum'ah. <clears throat> you have to fill out a form. You're not going to be tracked. You fill it out, it takes about one minute or so, basic information, they don't even look at it, you don't have to be uh, poor, you don't have to be rich, you don't have to, whatever, you can just sign it up, it's something we want to do for the community, and inshallah, today, just for today, it's going to be after Jum'ah, normally, it'll be from 11 to 12, or somewhere around that time, we'll put out an announcement, and of course, for the non-Muslim community, those who are in need there, inshallah, they can drive through and take food as well, this is something we wanted to establish for a long time, it took a lot of uh, maneuvering and working you know, out some details, but inshallah we're trying to roll that out. So for today, this is just, it's just for the Muslim community, the bags are prepped. If you signed up already, you just show them it, and you can take the bag if you have it. There's a QR code, you put in some info, and there's some fruits and vegetables and stuff like that for you to take inshallah. So let us support this cause, bi'idnillahi ta'ala, to help give to our Muslim community, our non-Muslim neighbors and friends, you can inform them about it, Insha'Allah, they'll see the way, the character of the Muslims through yet another uh, activity we're trying to implement here. Barakallahu feekum. Allahumma khil al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat wa al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat. Al-Ahyan min huwa al-Mu'at bin Nakan to 
الناس يا مقلب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم إنا نسألك الرضا بعد القضاء اللهم إنا نسألك الرضا بعد القضاء اللهم إنا نسألك الرضا بعد القضاء اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على عادات وعداء الدين اللهم انصر إخواننا وأخواتنا في فلسطين وفي لبنان وفي كل مكان يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين